The first game that I covered was when Christian Eriksen obviously oh, collapsed. No. And I couldn't believe it. It felt like an out of body experience what was happening. I was crying. I like, you know you, a guy's trying to get a number, he's like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We should have lines on the high street. Yes! Hello, I'm David Vianic. And I'm Smith Gonzalez again. And this is Strip <laughs> brought to you by William Hill. On this show, we talk to celebrity guests as we get nostalgic looking back at retro football shirts that made us fall in love with the game. That's right, our guests pick four football shirts to tell the story of their life. The first one, mm -hmm. the haunted one, the unforgettable one, and the named one. Now, today's guest uh, is a presenter for Leeds United. He's a host of the Leeds United podcast and is on MOTDX. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Emma Jones. Emma Jones. Thank you for having me, lads. Always, Thank man. you. It's you know a what's, pleasure. You know what's crazy? It's like, I'm not a morning person. Neither am I. So I've, I'm coming, I'm like, oh, oh it's, it's, it's early. The sky has not changed colour yet. <laughs> and Emma just walks in and I just, my energy just... It was, it was great. Yeah, it was like, like a shock. It was just like, oh, a good shock. I'm pleased. So it wasn't too much for you then, lads? No Ooh. way. Because no I do way. worry about that. Morning! <laughs> <laughs> Someone's here then. <laughs> I think we're, we're, we're exactly like you with energy, but I just think in the morning, it just takes us long to just... It takes just, me, it does take me a while to adjust sometimes, yeah. yeah. You, you maybe like preserve yours so that you can let your energy out throughout the day. Whereas what I do, I get it all out. Mm. And by the end of this podcast, I'll be crashing. Okay. I'm like, I'm done. I need to go to bed. <laughs> See, I'm the opposite now. And how do you then get it back up? Because you've got work later on, haven't you? As well, you've got presenting to do. Uh, a coffee. I live on I live on caffeine just to get me through. <laughs> and she works with Jermaine Genius as well. Oh, Jermaine! I do actually. He's a good yeah. lad, isn't he, Jermaine? We had him on. Amazing guy. Yeah, and he's got a good story as well. I feel does. like when you dig into Jermaine, there's a lot more there than you see initially, isn't there? Mm. Yeah, of course. Leeds will be alright this season anyway. I mean, getting you got rid of Calvin Phillips, but I do like the look of Tyler Adams. Yeah, and actually, do you know what? I was chatting to Tyler and Brendan Aronson just a few weeks ago. I sat down with them. Because um, obviously, all of a sudden, these Americans have come in. Yeah. The manager, Brendan, <laughs> Tyler. And it, they are great guys. What I love is, obviously, the fans love them anyway for what they're doing on the pitch. But their character and the way they bounce off each other. They've got great energy. They are so passionate. And you can tell they're just buzzing to be playing for Leeds United in the Premier League. You can see that for them, this is like a dream come true. And they're so young. I, mean, I felt so old. I felt like I was their mother when I was talking to them. How old are you? Uh, we'll not talk about that. Boys. <laughs> Hang on. How old do you think I am? There we go. <laughs> Remember, right, you have to be kind. You so don't ask me to help you because you asked the question. <laughs> I'm going to go with 27. That's kind. Thank you. I'm going to go on the dot 30. 32. So I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, lads. Yeah. Yeah. You've been kind then. How do you think we are? Like, I love that game. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I wish, oh, God, I'm going to. I reckon you are, because you, you've been doing YouTube a long time, so you've got to be a bit older, but not old. Mm. 29. Okay, not bad. I'm 30, yeah, solid. So, and I reckon you are, because I know you were a PE teacher oh, for 10 years. So away. I kind of feel like, do it, you can't become a teacher really until you've been to uni, 21, 31. You've got to be older than you look, so I'm saying 32. 42. Oh, sorry, I nearly swore. Are yeah. oh, you actually? <laughs> yeah. <gasps> You're 42. Did yeah. anyone, why is everyone else look as shocked as me? <laughs> Did you all know that, or has he been lying this whole time? Be is that a joke? Am I 42? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> what, what's your skincare routine? It's I'm water. serious. Just, I don't even cream myself. Honestly, I don't cream myself. That's insane. It's water, man. <laughs> I feel bad now because I wasn't that shocked about your age, but like yeah. 42 is no, wow. I mean, you smashed it, absolutely smashed it. Ooh. Great beard. If I look like you in 10 years, I'll be buzzing. Yeah, no, listen, don't. Listen, you look, you look like actually gassing me, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Now, now, now you've got me think I could be a model. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't say that. I'm joking. I'm ASOS it. model? Like ASOS, ASOS model. ASOS or would you prefer like high-end fashion? No, I'm old school, like Little Woods. Yes. <laughs> yeah. like yes. Catalogs. Bring back catalogs, man. Yes. Oh my God, yeah. were they the best? Yeah. Any kind of catalogue, when you get it posted through your door, I used to love that. <laughs> Did you boys ever have them? Um, you probably didn't. Like the Avon catalogue posted. The Avon, the Avon catalogue. And you'd have the Avon women that would come knocking at your door or in work and they'd give them to people. Like my mum used to get it and you'd circle the it. things you want and they'd order it for you and you'd get it delivered. And no, that's no, not the best, Sorry, the best catalogue was Argos. <gasps> I, I would go like to Argos, like queue up. Before it opens to get that catalogue. You didn't have a, it outside in, in like the plastic. Heavy, wrap, man. Yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? Big, innit? Oh, no, but there's two. There was the thin one and then there was the thin yeah. one. Yeah. Was the thin one the offers? 
uh, or like was, the, yeah, the big was more like, like, yeah, it's like Harry Potter. The big, the, like, the, like the big one. Yeah, that was like J.K. Movie. Rowling wrote it. Yeah. In movie. That yeah. was, and do you know, the toy section, like growing up in the build up to Christmas, oh, yeah. circling, like, my mum and dad had given me my budget <laughs> of what I was allowed. Oh, I'd be like, how do I make this work to go to? It was brilliant. They have like little tents. They have little like, toy yeah. houses. <laughs> you have the electronic section. Oh, do you know what? My favourite, right? My favourite thing it's like that eBay I ever in got. A catalog. Yeah, that is exactly what it is. Crazy. A Stretch Armstrong, right? Oh my God. And do you know what? I, I was... love Stretch Armstrong. Oh, it was amazing. I I, I remember the Christmas. Mm -hmm. Of course. I, oh, I, it was the best. I unwrapped all the presents there quickly, just trying to get to him. Mm. And I loved him. I spent all of my time just stretching, stretching him. Stretch but I stretched him so much, he went rock hard. Like, you know, the gel inside him, I couldn't stretch him anymore. So my nana put him in the airing cupboard, thinking that might make him a bit flexible again. Never happened. Anyway, fast forward years and years and years. They re-released it. Yeah. They brought out a Stretch Armstrong like part two, and I had no word of a lie, boys. I had to wait in a queue because he was that popular. I had to wait in a queue to get my second Stretch Armstrong, but I did, and I was delighted. And did you break him again? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> I overstretched him. I just—he was brilliant. He was great, wasn't he? I've never had a Stretch Armstrong. But <gasps> you could stretch I've never all day. Him around. Just August Cat. Oh man, bring him back, I reckon. Because no one, no one goes. <laughs> bring back no the one loot. Has the yeah. yeah, bring back all of these things, A to Z. Ages. Yeah. Yeah. No, not yes. that, that. You mean the maps, don't you? Yeah. No, because I, I would never have got here if that was still a thing. Like, I can't read a map to save my life. I need a sat -nav. even with a sat nav. I get. Do you know what it was? Yeah, this is this, this is why this is why I love yeah. this show. We get nostalgic, man. Oh, I love it. Yeah, we do. Can we just talk about the Argus catalog all day? We can, I can amazing. carry on and carry the, on. The and blue carry little on. pens that you get. Blue when you oh, used to go like in. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then you take it up to the till. Yes. I'm so exciting. This is what I like about this show. We always take it back. And just you know, bring back good memories, mm. you know, and that, like you said, was that was nostalgic, you know. Man, I miss it. Bring it back. Well, of course, we're talking about shirts. Mm. Um, we, we're going with the first one. And you went with the Manchester United home 1996 kit. Mm. Yeah, I'd like to tell you, boys. Why this shirt, Emma? I didn't fall in love with it. That, mm -hmm. Can let me just tell oh. you that I never fell in love with it. So my um, I've got a twin brother and an older brother. Okay. So I'm the only girl in my family growing up. And I got all the hand-me-downs, because obviously at that age, I was smaller. Um, and my older brother was a massive Man United fan, loved Man United. So any time that he grew, and he grew fast, <laughs> I'd get all his cast-offs. So mm. that was one of the things that was given to me in a whole pile of stuff that my brother couldn't wear anymore because he was too long. Um, but it literally sat at the bottom of a drawer and I never touched it. So that was my first shirt that I was given, but nice. um, never wore it. It was in and amongst it. It was like, it, yeah, it was nice that, it, you know, I used to get all his own clothes, but I would have liked some of my own. I would have liked <laughs> some of my own clothes. But it's cheaper, that's cheaper though. It, it was cheaper, but it mm. did mean that I was just dressed like the lads for my whole childhood. Like so a, Like a tomboy type look. Yeah, uh, yeah. but and Zendaya. Also, so they gave me like, um, do you remember the, the fluorescent, orange and green Deodora uh, t-shirt shorts combo and the poppers, the popper track. Like orange Deodora? Oh, I lived in it. You wore, you wore orange kit? Uh, full orange, and we're not talking like, not subtle orange, but bright fluorescent orange, and then there was a bright, a fluorescent green one, and I lived in it. Like a linesman? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling offside. Yeah. <laughs> After the club, you're out with the girls. Like, you know, you, a guy's trying to get a number. He's like, <laughs> That's offside. We should have linesmen on the high street. Yes. Oh my After God. After a night out. That's a great idea. And I will, I need to go and get my Theodora Florescence <laughs> back and make that my job. Don't, that's brilliant. I love that. Um, but yeah, so that was, and also, even though I never wore it and it definitely didn't make me fall in love with Manchester United. When I was thinking about that shirt, there is something nostalgic about it, mm. that it takes me back to that time where, you know, growing up with my brothers and just being having no choice but to be a tomboy because, you know, I'd be forced to go in goal. They wouldn't let me, they'd never let me, you know, in the back garden, I'd just be getting balls pelted at me. And just that, those times where, I know a lot of people watching this won't remember this, but like phones weren't a thing. Like oh. you'd go out and play. And like you, like, that's the first- With people. With people, people real, yeah. real life. Like you'd get up out of bed, yeah, yeah. you'd brush your teeth and have your breakfast and go out all day. And your parents were happy with that. Like, mm, yeah, come back. Fine. Yeah, go on. Yeah, to come back at tea time mm. and then maybe go out for another few hours. Like I loved true. those Playing years. Yeah. yeah, and and then you'd come in and watch like, it was the, um, the time where, you know, TV was brilliant in that time. They had and the, I, the back offs. 
big Did TVs. I? Yeah. They didn't like go on your wall. Because imagine those on your wall. <laughs> the big Yeah. <laughs> just... They bring the wall down. <laughs> with the brown, <laughs> with the brown sides yeah. on the wall. <laughs> just you got, you got orange wallpaper, like but you're all brown, yeah. Yeah. Do you know who are, actually? Quite 3D, though. I, I had one of those TVs for too long, and my mate had to have a word with me. He was like, Emma... those TVs, right? Um, do you not think you should get a flat screen now? Because this is not what people have anymore. I'd got it from Argos um, back in the day. No way. I'd got it. I'd been given it. It was like my first TV when I was like 12. And at this point, I think I was like 22. And I was still clinging on to it in my bedroom because <laughs> I just... I'd never even thought to change it. I but, them, man. Yeah, they were good. They were good TVs. And TV was good. TV oh, was TV really was good sick. then. TV was amazing. There was less choice. Yep. Yeah. So four channels. Yeah. Five channels. Four. Yeah. Yep. And so you kind of although um I was talking about this actually. It was in the area where, where in the era where like wrestling was massive. Like WWE. Yeah, I was wrestling. Um well I was on the receiving end of it all the time. So my brother Yeah, all the time. But your brothers. Do you remember like Kurt Angle and everything when they were big? Yeah. So <laughs> My brothers, no, true. We'd, we'd watch it. And do you remember, you could get the wrestling belt from Argos. You, do you remember this? You could. You do you could. remember that? Yes. Why aren't you speaking? Because I love wrestling. <laughs> I've still got the wrestling belt in my house Have from you Argos. Actually? Yes. Yeah, he does. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> he loves that. wrestling. Yeah. It was, it, that was, again, a whole other, because I believed it. I bought right into it. Like, you believe that this whole thing is real and you're there and immersed in it. But because I was little, my brothers would then experiment with me doing the choke slam and doing everything like that. So when I was thinking about that first shirt, it brought back all those kind of memories of, you know, the nice memories of my childhood where, I mean, probably not that nice at the time, probably scarred me for life. No, I mean, <laughs> but, that, that, that was character building. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that character. is exactly yeah. it. Yeah. That was my childhood as well. I, I did the same to my cousins. Yeah. Just did on the, the bed was the wrestling ring. And I would do the power driver, the, the power bombs, the choke slams. Mm. It's good fun though, wasn't it? It's good fun. Should I... we ever go now? Can <laughs> <laughs> you choke slam yeah, yeah. You probably can. I weigh like five I'm, pounds. I'm scared. Yeah, I'm scared <laughs> of the damage I'd do. <laughs> you, wear, you wear an Argos catalogue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stay with you. We years. are getting nostalgic. <laughs> I'm loving this. We're getting nostalgic. This is the show. But it's the show that takes you back. Mm. So Emma, you know, I'm learning a lot about rivalry. Oh, I didn't know Ipswich, Norwich. Rivals, mm. uh, Blackburn and Burnley. Now, I miss myself up there because I've got a show called If Blackburn Signs a Dan. Mm. But I'm a Burnley fan. I was an Arsenal fan. Why are you a Burnley fan? Because I just basically started a, a, a season of football manager with Burnley <laughs> and I just fell in love with them. And I, they messaged me and they sent me a, a top and we're talking. They've invited me down to Turf Moor. Now I support Burnley. Love this. Did you go to Turf Moor? I'm going. I'm going. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and actually watch uh, Burnley versus Blackburn. So I'm going to go no to my way. first... No way! But what? Big derby. Yeah, but what actually originally made you pick Burnley? Um, and when I did just, it start? Is this like a season-long thing or? No, it, it started. It started this year. It was um, basically just. I, I remember just looking at Turf Moor, and I like stadiums with gaps because <laughs> yeah. that takes me back to like Highbury. Yeah, that's so I like Arsenal awesome when that Highbury is nostalgic. So yeah. I said, you know what? I'm going to support this team. It's because it's different. And I'm, when I tell people, people are like, "What are you doing?" So I like that reaction. You like being I a bit like, controversial. Yeah, I like being controversial. So Arsenal's your team. Arsenal was my but, team. Oh, they're not at all. No, anymore. Not You're abandoning like them. All of nothing. The uh, documentary really, I strongly dislike that. Why? Um, it's just Arteta with the light bulbs and stuff. I just see. I, mean, I was a PE teacher, so I don't like all that. You know. I really I'm did like school. it. But what I liked most was the mm. memes that came off the back of it, of people drawing like potatoes on the, yeah, yeah. On the clipboards <laughs> and everything. That was brilliant. I, I can't wait for Burnley to bring, like, bring out one. I went on Burnley. I liked Sunderland's Till I Die. That was great. Are you going to be in Burnley's? I want to. I'm going. I'm definitely. I, you know, what? I tried to go the other just because it was like it's like four hours away. But I'm, I, I want to go and hang around in Burnley. I ever... want to go clubbing in Burnley. Oh, I've done it. What? It? Oh, it is great. Do you know what? Because right, we went on holiday in 2008 and met a load of mates from Burnley, and we used to make like an annual trip over there because it's not far away. Brilliant! It is the cheapest night out that you will ever go on. The stickiest dance floors. Oh, Anything goes. That. Like it is. One of the best. You like will, Audi. You'll love it. You'll love it. You going again? Anytime soon? You think you're going again? Uh, if you're inviting me, yeah, of course we'll. I should go over. I well to, no, you need to invite me because you know uh, where to go. Well, you invite me to a game and then we'll go clubbing after it. I'm serious. And you could, so yeah. we'll go together. I will yeah. call Burnley now. I'll okay. stop this. I'll stop this show right now. Go on then. And call Burnley. Go on. Burnley. <laughs> I need two tickets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna come? Oh yeah, three. Oh, three, three tickets. You know, I've got, you know, I've got the shirt. The Burnley shirt as well? I've got a Burnley shirt. Why right, can you... I get free tickets, please? I've posted it and they, they added me and they were like, oh, welcome. As well, like, yeah, yeah, I'm a Burnley. Okay, yeah, well, there's three of us. Like, I'm nice not an thing. ultra, but like, I'm, 
I support them You'd too. Go and but I'm watch more like it. I support many teams. I'm like I'm like what do you call it when you have multiple relationships? Um, polygamous. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a polygamous like non -monogamous supporter. Or, yeah, polygamous. Yeah. Well, who are your all your relationships with? So they tend to be Serbian players right. that I'm in relationships with. So like Mitrovic. Oh, amazing. Um, big relationship with him. Like, is that like is Mitrovic like your wife and then the yeah. other your girlfriend? I would say he's my main. Yeah, he's my he's, main. He's the main. He's the yeah. yeah. Hundred percent yeah. right yeah. now. Before that, I mean, we didn't really we had Vidic before, but he was United and I was yeah. Liverpool, so I couldn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had a bit of tension in the yeah. household. And then like Ivanovic, he was great. Oof, and he had a great like. Hey, body as you've well. got high standards. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Vanovic's yeah. TV was incredible. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, no, but you know, uh, metaphors aside, just yeah, Serbian <laughs> players and just stories that interest me. That's how I support football these days. Yeah, and Liverpool was like, that was my main for a while as a mm. team and a club. But I think when, after they won everything, I was like, I have nothing left to support now. Mm. I feel like I've done my bit, my yeah. hard work. We've won everything. So now let me suffer again you, know I mean? <laughs> you almost you can't you, you want the discomfort a little bit you want to feel you know that almost you want to feel the sadness and then because mm. the joy the elation mm. is there whereas following leads means you don't have the time to do that you can't invest yeah, that you've got yeah, too yeah. much emotional investment in that roller coaster that's true i think i thought what is it it's like buddhism you know they say mm. like suffering is the meaning of life in some way mm. yeah and perhaps that's that's what i've what, what, how, I, how i support football well, speaking of suffering, let's move on to the haunted one. And this is the shirt that gives you those, those nightmares. You know, those moments where you're like, you know what? I feel bad, I don't feel good. And you picked the Leeds 0304 away kit. I think most Leeds United fans would pick this okay. um, because obviously that was the season they got relegated. And little did they know the years that would ensue and the emotional roller coaster that everyone was going to have to be on. Mm. Um, because obviously, the thing is, when you get relegated, your aim is, right, we need to get back up as soon as possible, not go down again. <laughs> so it was kind of, and there are so many things that happened in those 16 years between that relegation and getting back to the Premier League that I think there were many Leeds fans out there that kind of wondered if it would ever happen. Was this ever, were we just destined to basically now just be in the championship? Even though, and I know I would say this, but other people who support other teams and clubs have also said, there's something about Leeds, like they belong in the Premier League. And I know you have to earn that right, and they have, but they always seemed bigger than the championship. Or well, that's how I feel, obviously. Um, so yeah, that is the haunted one. And, you know, I started, I started working for Leeds United while they were still in the championship. And I think there, you know, you never lose hope, do you, as a fan? You always want it to happen, but you kind of get to a place where you're like, oh, is it, is this going to happen? And so you, you enjoy the ride, you enjoy the wave, you enjoy the when they play well and when the performances and results are good and when they're not, you moan about it naturally. And obviously I was there with the arrival of Marcelo Bielsa and there was a definite shift in feeling when he arrived. Um, and I can't ever explain it. I can't explain what that feeling was, but something changed. He, um, you probably, you probably know all this anyway, but he, standards of everything seemed to go up. You know, even at the training ground, at everything, if there was a bit of paintwork that wasn't quite right, he wanted it sorting because in his mind, the attitude was everything needs to be at a certain standard for performances. Everything has to be up here. And, um, there was the heartache, obviously, that season we thought, it's happening, it's happening. And then, obviously, it didn't happen in the, the, you know, the playoffs. We didn't manage to do it. Cheers, Derby. But so there was that bit of heartache. But that was the, you know, for me, I felt like, oh, my God, this is the closest feeling I've got. Like, this could really happen. Um, and then the season, when we actually did get promoted, I think it meant so much because it had been so long. And in 16 years, there's Leeds United fans out there who have never seen them. Um, in the Premier League. Uh, like, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, when you let that yep. sink in, yeah. they'd never known their club in the Premier League. So ultimately, you know, that pain and suffering, it was worth it because we got back there and obviously it was a ninth place finish that first season. It was a great season. And I think, I don't know about you boys, I mean, you're Burnley and you're everyone's, but like um, Leeds became... <laughs> Sounds so wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Leeds became everyone's second team, it felt that season. Yeah, 100%. So. I, I'm glad you agreed with no, that. Yeah. Same as me. They became like one of my favourite teams as well. Everyone appreciated their style of play. Yeah. We loved what Marcelo Bielsa was doing with them. Um, the fitness levels were insane. 
Um, and in some ways, that was maybe a part of their demise. Is, you know, that, that they were so, everything was done to such a high level that maybe that couldn't be maintained for that much longer with that level of consistency. And I think, obviously, we had the worry as well that the season just gone, like, what's going to happen? And we, go, we, we didn't want to go back down again. Managed to just get through it. Um, but it's all very leads. It's all very leads, isn't it? You know, you, you're riding this wave and then you're like, oh God, is it all going to come crashing down? And then we're back up again. So I think that, um, yeah, for a lot of Leeds United fans, that shirt would represent a haunted one, a memory. And like I say, because of everything that happened in between, that it wasn't just that, it was things that had happened with the club. There were so many things going on behind the scenes, you know, that fans knew about. And so to finally get back there was an amazing feeling. See, that, see for me, that is a documentary. Mm. That is a documentary yeah. for me. That, or even a, it should be a movie in the cinemas. Mm. Mm. Because I, I mean, Leeds were, they even got, they went down to League One as well. Yeah, yeah. So they didn't. So, they got relegated again. Again. Yeah. So it's that heartache of you're hoping, you're praying with every ounce of your being, and like I say, there were other stuff going on off the pitch as well, which as you know, as football fans. When you're invested emotionally, that stuff hurts because you kind of wish you could control that bit because you could see what what is in the best interest for your club. Mm. Um, so to get relegated and get relegated again and then eventually, after so many years, fight your way back up to the Premier League, uh, it's pretty remarkable, really. Did, when, you, when you got relegated again, because I know me, like Burnley in the Championship mm. now, Burnley go League One. Yeah, that's what I mean. But I'm unfollowing Burnley on Instagram. <laughs> like, like <I'm, laughs> I can't do League one for some reason because mm. I feel you like do, it's... you do know then now retracting those tickets you ain't getting them because, now. Yeah, yeah, it was a big if like, like, did you ever one? think to yourself okay we're in league one now no, but one day we'll still be in the prim yeah I think you'd be hard pushed to find any Leeds fan that didn't ever believe they were going to get back up there and even in league one the following was phenomenal Leeds fans like you know even away they they would travel everywhere it, that never stopped and I think you know I don't mean to be disrespectful to League One, but you're right. There is an element of the Premier League is the pinnacle and we all talk about it. And the championship even, I think, gets forgotten a bit. I do think it does sometimes. Um, but you're right, when it goes down to almost League One, League Two, people do start to forget about it. But no, I think Leeds always knew where they belonged. So even through the heartache and the pain and getting relegated to League One, they wouldn't have ever lost hope ever mm. of getting back up there. Mm. And like, I think you're right, actually. I've not thought about that. Like that story in itself, it could be a movie. It's a movie, man. And all the characters that came through the club at that time and all the stuff that was going on and, and d different managers and, you know, caretaker managers and people looking after things. I just think there are so many stories there that could be made into a movie. Yeah, and Bielsa, Bielsa coming. I mean, oh, that, that. <laughs> are you talking about the shift? I mean, for me, as a character, the minute he's coming, I've gone, I love this man. Are you sitting on like boxes, like cartons? Buckets. Yeah. Bucket. It was the Tra Bielsa bucket. He's, Translator. He translates smoking mm. cigs. I mean, he's spying on teams like, <laughs> over the bushes. Like that is something that, you know, it's unconventional. And I think yeah. I appreciate that, that type of energy. I admired that about him. He was football, football, football. Mm. He lived and breathed it. And I think he, um, he did it his way. You know, he wasn't um, somebody who was passionate about talking to the media, I don't think. That wasn't really in him. Didn't want to come on here. He was, um, oh, has he said no? I think so, yeah. Do you want me to have a word? Please. Please. <laughs> I'm joking, I've never spoken to him in my life. I wasn't allowed to go London. anywhere near him. Can you Stay imagine? Stay away from him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Funny if they say that about a lot of people. Don't let her near them, whatever you do. Um, but I was in awe of the man. I was in absolute awe. And there are very few people that I would be um, silenced by. Mm. But there was this feeling of like, oh, Wow, I have so much respect for him and what he does. And even though we all saw what he was doing on the pitch, we never knew him. Did you ever feel like, as a manager, you, you knew him? Because I remember Guardiola and... Um, I want to live with him. Pochettino, they were... <laughs> they were, yeah, they were, disciples. They were, yeah, they, yeah, they were talking about him like he was like a, some sort of god. Yeah, and there's mm. books written and there's stories all about how, um, you know, the things he's done to sign players and how he spotted talent and the kind of things he's done. But the person, the man, what yeah, biscuits no. does he eat? Oh, what does yeah. he do? You know, what I, what I love... Rich tea. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he would not, be Not the tea. chocolate one. They're just not like... Yeah. yeah, rich tea. Plain. Plain. Just, but what I also loved is you'd see him around different yeah. areas in Leeds, like in Morrison's, in his Leeds yeah. tracker, just doing he's his just, thing. He's not normal. Just yeah. I saw that, you know? There was no... There were no airs and graces. But I, I, when I say the human, that's mm. what I mean. We didn't know what's he... Apart from football, mm. what does what he, he think and feel? Mm. 
Mm. You know, he's very, this this mysterious character. Mm. But I loved it. I loved it. But also, respect to Jesse Marsh, completely different character, but also doing wonderful things now at Leeds United. Um, and, you know, very outspoken, vocal, um, you know, overtly passionate. You can all see it. And Leeds fans love that. And I think that was a, that was a difficult role to fill, to go from a guy who, after 16 years, had got us promoted to the Premier He's a god. You know, there were so many paintings and murals of every of Bielsa all around the city. To fill those, that's hard. That's got to be intimidating mm. to, for anyone to do. So fair play to Jesse for coming in, filling those boots, and well, and, you know, implementing his style of play, bringing in his play, some of his players, and, you know, at present, making a success of it. Yeah, it's good that you guys are still sort of, it seems like Leeds are doing, you know, they're back on the right track. It was Ooh. sad to see Bielsa go, though. I think when he went, a bit of my heart went as well. Mm. Yeah, I, you, I, you're absolutely right. I think any Leeds fan would say that. I mean, that it was like, it was like a family member had died. Oh. Because you knew as well, you know, like with some managers, you think, oh, well, they'll be back at another club or you'll mm. see them. Where's he going? What's he doing? That was always mm. the thing is, are we ever going to see this man again? So you went corner shop for get the milk, never came back. Yes! That story, yeah. yeah. Bye, Dad. Bye. Where have you gone? <laughs> you know, that kind Good of thing. Argentina or something. But, yeah. yeah, but great guy. A great, great guy for what he... And what he did at Leeds United and that feeling, I will never forget. And also remember that it was during the pandemic. He brought so much joy to Leeds fans at a time when, God, people were so... A lot of people were struggling, mm. suffering... And, you know, couldn't necessarily um, celebrate in a way that they would have liked to ordinarily. And to have done that, to have filled an entire fan base with such joy and elation at a time when we were so deprived of it, is something, that feeling, like if I could bottle it, I would, you'd sell it for millions. Mm. Wow. Uh <laughs> oh, got deep there, do we, you guys? <laughs> so I don't know if you can tell, but I really like the answer. <laughs> Talk about Ellen Roll, though, because obviously, you know, Growing up, I remember when Barcelona uh, played uh, Le um, Leeds at Ellen Road, of course, and Lee Boy was scoring after Dida's mistake and the, the, the atmosphere. It was like watching WrestleMania. Yeah. Yes, yes. Like, it was Look. electrifying. It's heavy. Yeah, like, uh, is, uh, Ellen Road, is it like oh. the rowdiest? Have you two been to Ellen Road? Never. Oh, I'd love to go. You I've never been. I've been outside. I walked past it. <laughs> yeah, Didn't like, dare go in. Uh, no, I couldn't go in now. You need to come because it is the kind of atmosphere you have to feel it to believe it. It's unbelievable. Right. And you will hear so many players and so many managers, and I know a lot of them do it, but talk about the the fans getting behind the players at Ellen Road. And it really is. And you even hear um, opposing managers talking about Ellen Road being a tough place to go to mm. because of that. Because Leeds fans are so, so vocal and there is this steely belief that, you know, we will come back from behind. You know, even if we concede, that's not that's not the end of it. We will right until the closing moments be at it, at it, at it. And I've spoken to obviously loads of the players in the last few years about that. And um, they talk about what that does for them and how they feel and their confidence when they hear that. But also new players coming in, like the American lads, like Tyler and Brendan. And, you know, what did you expect? And they all say, I was told, but you cannot prepare yourself for that. Because actually when you go out there and you hear that for the first time, there is no feeling like it. So I think, boys, you have to go and you actually have to feel it to believe it. Mm -hmm. I... I love it. I love it. And also the other beauty of it is you're in Leeds. So everyone talks to everyone. It's mm. the kind of place where you could go on your own and come away with about 20 mates by the end uh, of it, after the end of a game. Like, I, it's like a community, like one uh, community. Because it's a one club city, of course. Yes, so, exactly. So yeah. in, that in itself is huge. But it's just, um, yeah, that place, it just lives and breathes passion. That's what I'd say. You going to come? I think so. It sounds... I have to, man. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, we're not doing a think so. No, we're going, we're going. We've got, there's got to be some. You, if you come, if you come Burnley, yeah. we'll do two. Do you know what we'll do? We'll do north. North. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do like a <gasps> turf moor. If there's, a, if there's a, LM, a game in the world on Sunday, yeah. and there's a turf moor game on Saturday, or vice versa. And Nottingham Forest yeah. on them back down. Oh, you want to go? You want to go? See Jermaine Genius. You want to go see? All right, cool. So we can just. I'll dip off before. I'll just do. That's all right. Say hi to Jermaine. We'll do a weekend. We'll do a weekend 100 I love that. Yeah. I love that. And then go out in Leeds or Burnley afterwards. Oh. Some great places to go out in Leeds. Have you been out in Leeds? I thought it's great. <gasps> Have you it's, been out in Leeds? That's great. It's brilliant. Yeah. Before we move on, like, mm. what, what's your favourite moment you've witnessed at Ellen Road? I think it's got to be 
promotion, really. I know I wasn't actually there, but that feeling, and uh, I loved, like, on the socials, you could see the players celebrating at that time. And, and sorry to bang on about him, but it, in that moment, you saw something in Bielsa because he went to join the boys. I don't know if you saw the clip, he went to join the lads. And there was, like, an emotional hug between him and Calvin, who... Like, look at the career trajectory of Calvin Phillips since Bielsa. Look at the player he has become. Um, and I know you can't completely thank Bielsa for that because Calvin has to go out and do it himself. But I think the influence he had on him as a player has been Massive. unbelievable. Big up Leeds, man. You spoke about Calvin Phillips. Ooh. And he's been great for England. Oh. So this uh, takes us on to the unforgettable one. The show that opens the door for great footballing moments. And you went with the England Home 1996 shirt. I have this shirt. I love the baby blue on the collars. Yeah. Why this shirt? Um, because this is my first time that I remember feeling the impact of football. Mm. I was six. There was like excitement in the air. And it was, there was just a bit of a buzz around. So even though at six, I didn't fully understand what was going on, I knew something exciting was happening, mm. if that makes sense. And it was my first, yeah, my first memory of like, what a tournament, what an impact a tournament can have on a nation. And then, like, the beautiful thing is, you fast forward to um, the Euros last year, and it was my first tournament that I'd ever presented. I got to actually be on air. Circle yeah, moment. Full circle You always speak about that, innit? Go on. Just, just love full circle yeah, yeah, where it comes, yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, I did that, and then, oh, I met that person when I was six, and then 20 years there, I'm working with them. Yeah. Like, Jermaine talked about, like, you know, he's like, oh, I was... I was a fan of this player and end up playing with him. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like, who was, Rio said that was... Rio said it, yeah. You know, I play golf with him. Or, it's crazy, so isn't many it? these full circle just, moments. Just on that, right, I um, I don't know what I do know. <laughs> when I was growing up, I loved David Seaman because oh, I loved his hair. Bless right? him. I just loved his Shawn hair. Shawn Michaels, that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was brilliant. It was like... Like, I, I'd never seen a man with a pony and luscious long hair. And at the time, so my hair is naturally really curly. Oh, and, is it? Yeah, and my mum used to backcomb it. So I would literally be... When I went to school, they called me the Munch Punch Kid because I just was like <laughs> hair. And so I was so envious of, like, his luxurious locks. Like, yeah. And we used to... Me and my brothers had, like, you know, the sticker books of Panini. Panini. I oh. love Panini sticker Loved books. Them. I used to get so excited if he if he was in it, I'd get or he, like either shinies. I love oh, the shinies. shinies. But he was my one who I just I was like this guy's hair. Anyway, a few years ago, I went to a fishing event, obviously, um, and he was there. Get some sea bass. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it took and he's really good by the way. He's like you probably know this already. He's great at fishing. Didn't like know he loves that. it. Oh. And he, um, I, didn't know that. I just kept staring at his hair, and I was like, that's the hair I used to stick in. But and I used to love like and. I was a bit like, I can't tell him that I love his hair. I just need to have a normal conversation. Mm, but you know, yeah, I was like, I want to touch it. I want to. Yeah. That was a full circle moment for me of like, I used to stick you in books and yeah. love it. And now, now I'm, I'm, just... I'm, I'm fishing with you. That is mad though, that, isn't it? That's, that, it always happens. But what about, you speak about the hair, but mm. the moustache. <gasps> it was that, fantastic. I could have stacked that moustache there. But I don't, back in those days, I don't know why everyone had this moustache and it just stopped so, yeah. right here. Like, I think it was it? a rule. Was it a rule, wasn't it? Yeah, you, yeah, my dad had one. And I look yeah. back now, I'm like, oh, dad, I'm sure about that look on you. Bring the semen back. That's why I say, bring the semen tash yeah, back. Yeah. It'll, it'll have, that'll go full circle. My hair's long. It'll have it. My hair's long. You could do a ponytail, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, a ponytail, easily. Yeah, Curly you've got well, great like, hair. Come back to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's brilliant, yeah. that hair. No, I love it. Oh, lockdown hair, isn't it? Why was it not that long before lockdown? I used to have like, skin fades like him. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm like... It's not oh, actually taking you that long to grow it that long. the earth and dad did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, wow. <gasps> wow. No, it's fixed, isn't it? Just but, do the David Seaman for us, please. party trick. Yeah, Just do, yeah, oh, David yeah, Seaman, watch yeah, this. Watch what, this, what, David Seaman. David Seaman's a ponytail. The, the Shawn Michaels. I don't like the ponytail. Let me do it. I'm like a Serbian priest. ready? There we go. Yes, it. There we go. I don't know. I prefer it when it's just out. I'll do a ponytail oh. for you, just so we can... Because yeah. we're talking about David Seaman. Yeah, let's do the Seaman. Let's see. But it's long. When I play football, it just like wallops around. <laughs> <laughs> it's epic. What do you oh, prefer, Emma? David Seaman's ponytail or Shawn Michaels? Oh, uh, long, David Seaman. I'll even have it out. Be... Shall we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go to a bar suit. Just go to a bar and be like, hey. <laughs> just, just... See, I feel like <laughs> this bit, is nostalgic. It's a bit creepy, isn't it? This is nostalgic because a lot of... A, 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 a lot of guys had his hairstyle back in the day. Just like, hey, no one does it anymore. <laughs> I, I just, he can't stop stroking <laughs> it. Would you give me your numbers? <laughs> if I came to the bar like this, would you give me your number? 
Yeah, man. Hey. Yeah, because because your moustache is actually joining with your. It's your, joining, your but beard, I can't get yeah. any hair though. But if it stopped, I wouldn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> just can't stop right here on the sides. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go back to David. Let's go back to Paul. We've gone a bit oh, too. Yes. Is, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Even sorry. Yeah, we, this this is what we do, man. This is, this is what I we do it. strict. <laughs> but we're, we are talking about the Euro 96 because of Emma picked the uh, England home 96 stop. It was, we were hosting the tournament. Yeah, that was the, the other thing that was lovely about mm. it was that it was in England. And then, like I say, you go full circle mm. and here I am, you know, hosting the tournament. Oh, afterwards. And like it was... That was an actual real moment for me. I remember sitting down in the chair about to go on and I was like, wow, this is big for me. This is a huge thing that I'm doing. I'm sat here and about to broadcast. And obviously it was when um, the first game that I covered was when Christian Eriksen obviously oh, collapsed. No. And I was so upset as everyone was. And I couldn't believe it. It felt like an out of body experience what was happening. I was crying mm. watching it. Um, and then because I was broadcasting back to back games because there were so many, you have to go back on air and do it. And it, that was a real day for me of like, okay, this is my first day doing a big tournament on TV. This has happened that's really tragic. And then I've had to go back on air and it was, I had all this excitement. I couldn't believe I'd got the privilege of being able to anchor it. And then there was heartache around what had gone on. And it was just, you know, one of them days where you're like, I'll never forget it. It felt really, really bittersweet. Um, but I thought that like the beauty of it was obviously Southgate then being there, you know, when the boys were taking the penalties, there was something, It was we were heartbroken what happened, but there was something lovely about him being there because of his experiences, being able to share that and be there for the boys. And it felt like, um, yeah, that felt, obviously you, you boys will remember, it's only last year, like it brought, again, it brought the nation together. And it was that feeling replicated that I kind of remember, but this time I felt like I could be, I was a part of it and I was, um, in London for pretty much the whole time, which was brilliant because again there was a buzz in the air. There was, I'd walk down the streets. I'd be like walking to go and get some lunch or something, and there'd be like people in fancy dress everywhere. Do you remember that? People would just come in like fancy dress and all sorts of different things, and I was like, was it's mental. the middle of the day. It was mental, yeah, it was amazing. It was mad. Everyone was just there was just new energy. It was, it? yeah, yeah. It was just after like there was still some restrictions. I remember yeah. like early on in the, in, in the tournament, it was like half a stadium, seventy five percent of the stadium. And then it was for the final, yeah. it was like full stadium. I remember like, you know, when England won the semis and yeah. the quarters, yeah. out on the streets. Everyone just, was just... Just, it was mental. Well, we'd been confined to our houses for, what, a year, mm. pretty much by this point, unable to see people. And like, I think even the least sociable of people were delighted to have something yeah. to celebrate and to see people. That tournament represented so much for me, so far apart, to go from being like six to 31. And that feeling was amazing. I just, uh, it, it just felt serious because going back to 96, I remember when Southgate hit the post and then everyone was like down. Yeah. And then there's the, we see adverts. Yeah. And yeah, it's like a yeah. joke. Yeah. It's mental. Every isn't it? advert, that, oh, he's hit the post. Yeah. And I was laughing. I was like, oh, that, that made us feel better. Yeah. It like lifted us. Whereas but, like in, in the 20, uh, 20 euros, yeah. as soon as Southgate hit the post, it's like, all right. We lost, you know, we're yeah. sad, but there was. I needed to see, we need something to lift us up. Yeah. So, if we had an advert just like, yeah, just like that, it could have, yeah, would have, you know, and because that was, um, you're right, it was a really low feeling it after was, that. Yeah, after and that. I, I felt for the lads, yeah. maybe it's because it was the final because that 96 was that's the same, true. isn't it? That's true, yeah, I know, but there's still, but there's still a lot of stake even there, you mm. know. But you're right, maybe it is because we'd let ourselves believe, mm. oh my god, we're gonna do it. But I felt for the lads, I really felt for the lads because you like. They wanted that as mm. much as the nation wanted them to do that. Mm. And you could see the pain on their faces and how devastated they were. Mm. And we were gutted, but they'll have felt like they'd let the country down mm. when they hadn't actually. They'd done us really proud. Yeah. They'd got that far and that close that actually we should have been applauding them and praising them. And you're right, it felt really heavy after that. I didn't like that feeling. I was like, they've done a lot for us and they've brought together a nation at a time when we really needed it and we should give them our respect. And they were so young, like, Saka, like, yeah. oh, I, I wanted to hug him. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to reach into my TV and I just hold him. him. Did I messaged you? him, yeah. I messaged him like, look, if anything goes wrong, you can come Burnley. Yeah. <laughs> I did, I did message him, but he didn't, he hasn't seen it. Yeah. He's not accepting. <laughs> Maybe he's unread it. <laughs> But, 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 but I do prefer 96, though. Well, yeah. Why? Because of the feeling around it. it. Yeah. I, the feeling for me was, I mean, especially when England played Scotland. Yeah. Do you think 96 was... 
because we didn't have social media as well. 100 That plays a big part. Big part. Yeah. I... But if we did, Paul Gascoigne would have been... Oh! <laughs> he would have been yes. famous. Why didn't we have it? <laughs> he would have yeah, been a meme hero. He was hero. perfect. Yeah. He would have been a meme he hero. He would have yeah, been a meme, yeah. You, so many memes. all over it. Oh, that would have been brilliant. When you're out with the boys on a Friday night. And it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> memes everywhere. Yeah. That would have been Isn't great, it? wouldn't that it? Yeah. That one with the water. And, oh. what were, how old were you then in 16? <laughs> 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 this is where you've got to remember your life. <laughs> <laughs> 2022 minus no. 42. <laughs> yeah. 96, I remember. I just remember music. Three lions on the show. Oh, that was that was that was the song. 96. So this is the last shirt. The one player you have in the back of your shirt, the named one. Uh, you have Eddie Gray, mm. which is the Leeds home kit from 1970. I think I was born around them times. Yeah, I think exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, Eddie Gray, if you don't know, mm -hmm. um, he's a Scottish former Leeds winger who was part of the legendary Leeds sides of the 60s and the 70s, which won two league titles and an FA Cup. Uh, he also went on to become Leeds manager twice and is considered one of their best ever players. Two of his goals mm -hmm. against Burnley mm -hmm. are regarded as Leeds' mm -hmm. best ever goals. Against who? <laughs> why? And why were they regarded must, as the best? You must have seen the iconic goal, the iconic Burnley goal. You're a massive fan. You must have seen that. Uh, no, I haven't, I haven't. <laughs> you need to go on YouTube and have a look. Eddie Gray was unbelievable. Obviously, it's well before my time because mm -hmm. it was around about your time. But it was, I was about <laughs> joking, I'm joking. Love but it. He, he was an unbelievable player mm. um, at a time when obviously like football was a kind of different game then anyway, wasn't it? But I think um, for me, the reason I would have Eddie Gray is it's a personal thing. Uh, you, what you've just listed there, unbelievable what he's done in his career and like uh, manager at Leeds, caretaker manager, all that kind of stuff. So on my first day working at Leeds United, I'd never been on TV before. I'd never done any TV. No way. I was bricking myself. Oh. Right? And they said, I got there and they said, you're going to go and interview Eddie Gray pitch side. And I was like, what? Oh, oh my God, like the nerves, I, like the earth fell out of my arse, right? So sorry, you might have to say that out, but I was like heading down. I've never heard that before, I'm not um, Yeah, <laughs> well, you know exactly what I mean, don't you? Yeah. So I'm heading down like, oh my God, uh, I'm meeting Eddie Gray. This is really intimidating because he's unbelievable at what he's done. I don't know what I'm going to say. What? And he hugged me and was the nice, he instantly put me at ease. He was like, you're right, how are you doing? Took an immediate interest in me. Like, where have you traveled from? How are you doing? Um, you know, spoke to me about the performance. And then by the time we got on air for the interview, I felt like he, this guy is my friend. I love them interviews. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's like us, can't yeah. yeah. Yeah, like very relaxed, very chilled. And you feel like you're in the company of, even though he's a legend, a friend. And our relationship from then, it's just been wonderful over the years, you know, like he'll rock up, he'd, he'd rock up at Leeds United um, in the TV section and I'd be like stuffing my face with a Kit Kat Chunky and he'd be like, oh, you eating again? And he got to know me and my quirks and I got to know him and um, the time that I watched him take with other people. And for a man of such stature, um, obviously we expect all human beings to respect other human beings, but he doesn't have to take the amount of time that he does to speak to people who, these people can't do anything for him, but he just takes the time. Mm. And the love and passion he has for Leeds United is unrivaled. I've never seen anything like it, you know. And at his age, you know, he's still at the games. He's still an ambassador. He's still doing everything he can to be involved in that club. And, I'm, you know, he lost quite a few of his teammates during the pandemic and stuff. And it was a shame that they never got to see Leeds United get promoted. But I'm really pleased that Eddie did because he deserved that for what he's done. Um, so for me, I would have him on the back of my shirt. Yes, because of his playing career and his managerial career and everything he's done at Leeds. But it's like a mark of the man. It's the man himself. I'm just looking at the shirt he's wearing now. Yeah. I mean, it just looks, it, it does look like pajamas a bit. <laughs> I'd say that. Yeah, pajamas are comfy. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. Shirts different. were so different 70 back then. shirts were different, man. Yeah, but, but bring, bring them back. They were great. Yeah. They will, they'll go full circle. Even a it badge looks different. Turn it's it like, around, let me see. Like the, the Leeds badge is different. Oh, though. that was great though. When I look at Wait, it. It's like a harp. Yeah, it, but, but that was, um, that was great. I, you know, I could wear that. I reckon I could rock that shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, could, could. you could be a fashion, you could go yeah. to the club with this in Berlin. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, but he is, um, Eddie is, yeah, he's a great man and um, 
wonderful like I love his morals I love mm. what he stands for um, and I think you'd be hard pushed to find true. any Leeds United fan that doesn't love him and they're old school the thing is like think of how he's seen the game change from when he played to now like the stories he can tell and also his family generationally like Archie Gray who's like 15 is playing for Leeds United unbelievable oh, player he's going to go places but his fa it's in his family football is in his family as well like the generations below him have you know played for Leeds and gone on to have successful careers elsewhere and he just lives and breathes the game but he's also you know a wonderful man and I think he um, signifies that era of football very well and what you stood for because it's a very different world now. Oh, it's so different. It's, I feel like it's shifted a lot, obviously, mm. from 70s to 2020. Of but even in our age, we, we the last 10 years, it's been like a huge shift. Mm. Like, maybe too quick. It's going yeah. quicker and quicker and quicker yeah. and quicker. Where do you think it's going to go? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm hoping it comes. It goes back to I the think 70s. so, like a throwback. Yeah, it goes back. Can it ever go out, though? Because it's just, it's a different world. Football you know, can't, no. Players from that era, some of them still have to work now. You know, because the, the money wasn't the same. Mm. Whereas now, I just think, I don't know how we ever go back financially. And yeah, surely, is, is yeah. the, isn't the money not at the root of the majority of the I changes? Mean, I mean, I, I remember paying 20p to get on a bus. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. 20p. And now that was you can't pay. Day rider. Yeah, you day could rider. go everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. That's mental, isn't it? Oh, the, the, the difference in times. The times. Because even like you said, in the last 10 years, even in the time that we've seen the world change, I'm getting deeper again. But I don't <laughs> I know it. how that ever goes back. I feel like we're... Unless you make like a conscious change to go back yourself. Mm -hmm. As in like, you know what? I'm going to go Stop. start a farm. Do you know yeah. those kind of people? People like, are doing that though. Yeah. yeah. yeah people are kind of getting interested yeah. in, in a more like, I say normal, but a more traditional way of mm -hmm. life. I get, I get the appeal of that lifestyle, particularly if you've, you know, if you've lived and worked in London or big cities yeah. and that all your life. And I get it. You might just want to go escape and be with your own company or with a few people that you love and just oh, animals as nature, well. Nature, nature's good. Nature, I've heard, good for the yeah. soul. Mm. You've heard. Yeah, because this isn't, <laughs> no, I mean, it's not a tree, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's an, I, when I touch a tree and when I touch an iPad, it's different. Of course. It's different vibes. Of yeah. course. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but you know, when you come over to Leeds and Burnley, we'll go touch trees. Oh, well, you can oh, they've got big trees there, they've got it, Big trees, lots of them. Fields, rolling hills, beautiful views. Roll down a hill like that. Yeah. <laughs> you ever done that? You know, you go to the park and you just roll down the hill. I've got a video of that, actually. That's one of my favourite. I've got a video of that on my TikTok. Speaking of social media, um, how did you get Lee Hendry and Alan McAnally to do videos? Because that's something I... And his dances you yeah, get. Yeah, like, how do you get them to do right. the, these, these dance moves on, on I just on ask them and they do it. Do what? you know what I think it is? Because I'm so bad at dancing and they can oh, see yeah. that, they know that I'm going to look worse than them. Oh, What's so you're your saying because like? I'm a good dancer, people don't want to dance with me. No, because I'm a terrible dancer. No, you're not. Oh, I'm awful. Oh, I watched your... your video yesterday. Was yeah, dumb. and I had to practice that 50 times. What's your go-to so dance? <laughs> Put in. What's your go-to dance? Um, like, let's say you're in a pub. I'm going to be honest. I'd, no, I'm not a dancer. I would just do a mum dance. I'd just shimmy and, sh and shake. It's not a bad shimmy, though. And, you know, just... Do you know, a little story on that. I was once, about 10 years ago, not in a bar though. with my mates, doing my thing. We yeah, had a few, shimmying. having a good time. Okay. A guy came up behind me and I was like oh, oh. And, he, and he grabbed me and went move me out of the way and went to my mate excuse me can you teach her how to dance mm. <laughs> it was in that moment I realized my dance career was never going to take off do, do you know what oh. I've realized if you if, 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 if I figured if you do your own thing yeah people think that that it's working and they think that you can dance. that's what I do I do mean but have, have you confirmed that or do you just think have you asked people if they think I, it's working? I when I dance I do my own Dusty, thing, brilliant. like my own thing, and it, like I'll go on the floor and just spin. And it Can you matter. show us? Yeah, I mean, <gasps> go on. We're gonna do the spinny. Yeah, I'm gonna do the spinny. So I just Can... go on the floor. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah. See the way, you see the way I go up and look at you. Yeah. It, it, it looks like I know what you I was did, doing. I mean, you did spin. Yeah. That was quick, is it? <sighs> Mate, was... Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's the way you. It's the way you end it. Mm. It's the way you end what you're doing. Yeah. Because that intrigues the person. Yeah. yeah. Does it? Yeah. Is so that just. That's... Yeah, yeah. Oh, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. As long as you sort of end up on beat at the end, yeah. it doesn't matter what happens in the journey. Exactly. It's like life. <laughs> it it, peaks it, and troughs. It doesn't matter. Peaks and troughs. If, if you, you look land around, well, if yeah. you land well. 
<laughs> yeah, you did nail the get up that bit. Yeah. You looked at me, you, you, you were confident. Exactly. That's And that's probably it, isn't it? But you remember the get up. You don't remember the spin. Yeah, yeah. I know I do. I will remember that. I'll be lying <laughs> in bed waiting myself <laughs> up in the bath tonight. Because <laughs> the spin, yeah. But um, getting, getting like, you know, people you, you interview to dance is, is, is very hard. And it, you do it's, it. it's actually not that hard. They all say, yeah, and I don't get why. Um, I'm yet to have someone say no. And I love that because... They just, and also, like, bear in mind, boys, you know, you're in an environment, you're working together, like, you're on air and you've got to take your job seriously. But outside of that, you've also got to have a laugh. And I think that's a great a thing giggle. to just, yeah. And we do just laugh. And then I feel like that's reflective of how we get on as people. Alan McAnally is one of my really good mates. I love is that. He's a good man. dancer. Uh, he has, A, he's got great hit movement. Ooh. He puts mine to shame. Well, you'll have seen Salsa. on my videos. Yeah. He, I show that man that the video once, Alan, this is what we're doing. Ricky Martin. Nails it. Ricky, oh, right. Ma Ricky Martin. Yeah. Alan Martin over there. That's, that's, <laughs> he, but he is, yeah, he's got the moves. McAnally. How's the injury? Uh, he's a great guy. He, he can dance. He, he's also got decent moves. They've all shown me up, to be honest. I don't think, uh, no, I tell a lie, Jamie O'Hara. Um, I, I tricked him into doing what was, I said, it was this is the chicken dance. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't going to do it. So he was just kind of going, bah, bah, like this on camera. And I was stood behind so him and dance. myself. Um, no, <laughs> I, I love his effort, though. He reminds me of me. Yeah. Like, 10 out of 10 for effort, like, 1 out of 10 for pulling it off. Apart from obviously this this yeah. you know conversation we've had which has been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Has there been a conversation or someone you've met where you've been like just mind blown? Apart from of course um our friend here Eddie Gray. Uh there has actually uh, Serena Vegan, England manager. Uh yeah. I interviewed her, sat down with her ahead of the Euros and I don't know what I was expecting because I'd never met her before. Mm -hmm. Uh and her character and what she stood for. I was I came away and I was like you're an inspiration to me because again you always assume or I did and wrongly in this instance that because she has such great responsibility that her focus will be on bigger picture which mm. it is but even sat with me she paid such attention to detail like um you know I had a, a, a cup and she was saying to them like give her water in that cup. She needs water if we're doing this interview to drink, like make sure she has water. You know, she was observing other things. It wasn't just about her being sat there talking to me. And the way she spoke about her upbringing, cause she, um, she loved football growing up, but she had to play with the boys. She had to have her hair cut really short to be like the boys. So she could almost pretend to be a boy to play with them. She loved football and hearing her journey and the struggles that she had to endure to get to where she is and knowing the influence that that must have on um, the women and on the team that she was um, managing is it was amazing and it was again it was that kind of thing with Eddie Gray it was beyond what she does in her role it was the person that came across her morals and principles and she was just I was blown away by her genuinely blown away she does seem awesome yeah mm. like just seeing her on the bench there's a certain aura mm. she has yeah. mm -hmm. that you just sort of feel I respect, and that, that, I'm not surprised England won the Euros. I know, because yeah. of when her. When I saw her, I was like, yeah, you look like you're, you're, you're ready for this. Do you know what it is, I think? There's a sense of calmness. That's it. And you, that puts you at ease. And if she's doing that in the dressing room, then as a player, that's going to put you at ease. You know, I mean, for all we know, she's laying into them at half-time and going, get back out there and get all that picture <laughs> perform. But there is, there's just this calm feeling. I don't get the same when I look at Gareth Southgate. You don't? No, I what? do now, I do now. What about you, you do get calm? Yeah, I do, I do get like, you know what, guys, it's cool. If it's going to be okay. Yeah. If it's going to be okay. I get that calm vibe of, of yeah. especially when he wears the waistcoats. Oh, oh yeah. I love, love the waistcoats. Waist yeah. yeah. She's like yeah. a great guy, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Mm. I think I look at her and it's like, oh, mm. to win a tournament, it seems like everything has to click. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, all the stars align. Something has to, yeah, all the stars align, mm. or you've got that one leader that just leads you to the stars. Yeah. I thought you said stars in, in your eyes. Oh, no. <laughs> what a, what a great show, show by the way. What a great show. Tonight, Matthew, What's that I'm like? going to be. No, 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 we're just stars in your eyes. Why do you want to go and put stars, stars in their eyes? It's the same old story. They just didn't realise. It's a long way to... That's not... No. <laughs> that's not that song. Oh. No. Do you know that song? All yeah, the great no, but that's not it. Oh. Uh, that. Do you remember Songs of Praise? Songs <laughs> of Praise on Sundays. Do you remember that? Yeah. So. I missed that show. Was that Ali Jones that did that? Do you remember him? He did Snowman, didn't he? We're walking in the yeah, That's a banger. That is yeah. a song. We're they should remix that. Into I was it. just about to say that. that. How House would the remix. remix sound? We're walking in the air. <laughs> <laughs> walking in the yeah, house. 
The three kings. Three kings, like general stuff like that about those guys. Did you ever do um, Give Me Oil in My Life? Yeah, keep, keep Me Burning. burning. That'd be a good remix. Imagine that on an album. That's a banger that's a yeah. song. That one's right at the end and it has like two verses, like it's not yeah. long. It's just like bam, bam, it's good bam. That. And did I you ever do From the Rising of the Sun Ooh. to the Going Down of no. the Same? The Lord's Name oh. is to be praised. Praise ye the no. Lord. No. The service of the no. Lord. No, but no. if you keep singing, give me yeah. another one. Give me another <laughs> you one. I missed it. You remember all that? Oh, I loved it. Do you know what? Because I used to be responsible for the overhead projector. Oh, no, you had the control. Yeah. <gasps> so, you know, you had the clear sheets with the what? writing, with the lyrics on. Yeah. Um, I would be responsible for like swapping in and out. You know, you so, know, you had you know, to know. That's what I hate. That. I hate seeing the hands yeah. moving yeah, coming the paper. Into the projector. I was like, oh, my God. You get to me. But then when you were doing it because you didn't want to miss your bit because you needed to get to the mm. next verse, your hand would have to kind of linger for a split second because you were like, God, pressure, in, 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 out. In. And we did have hymn books as well, but they f fall apart after a while, don't they? School was great, man. Uh, I miss I, school. Yeah, it was really good, wasn't it? We've gone way too nostalgic. Uh, oh, this, this has been one of my favourite interviews ever. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, man. I've thank had the best. You. I could talk to you both all day about well, it. I feel, you could go I feel on. like I've known you since 1964 when I was born. <laughs> yeah. I, feel like, I feel like I've known you since then. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, man. Thank you for taking me back to my childhood. Uh, it's been great. That, that's um, the, the name of the show, you know, yeah. it's stripped. We, we talk yeah. about football shirts, we, we get nostalgic. So, mm -hmm. you know, thank you to our guys at Classic Football Shirts for, you know, providing us with the shirts to look at today. People, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. That's right. And this has been stripped, brought to you by William Hill. That's right, uh, 18 plus, uh, gamble responsibly.